Hello there and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky the Third. I am the R Ingenious, but you may call me Eric, and in the last episode we explored the moon door of Estelle and Joshua. It is called Departure, and um, we ended up see, being able to experience the story of uh, Estelle basically reverse brainwashing Joshua once um, Cassius put him in their house. Uh, with, with the usage of bugs, a lot of them, and um, afterward the departure of Estelle and Joshua to uh, travel across, across the continent through the different countries and the different Bracer guilds away from Liberal. Um, as a result of being able to, or as a result of finishing it, we got our hands on a memory quartz. What's that do? Memory. One rock, four time door locations are shown on the minimap. Pretty cool, but, uh, no, it's not, uh, it's not that, uh, that great. So I'm not gonna equip that, but, um, I technically have it. But, uh, since I'm doing a let's play of this and I'm pretty much, uh, like, I, I can only re record a week's worth of content if I uh, sit down for, to record for one day, given, I, I should uh, admit, this this week I've sat down like three times or four times. No, the fourth time will be tomorrow when I record. So, I've got a little bit of, bag, uh, of a backlog now, although I didn't really record that much. But, um... I, w I won't be missing any moon doors since you guys have been doing pre a pretty good job at uh, always telling me of where the next moon door is or the next or the next uh, doors in general are that I could be that I could miss and what to uh, look out for. So I am very happy about that. We only need to do one more star door. All may set foot within this door to lay claim to its rewards. However, you must first overcome a trial. Overcoming a trial is what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do right now. It's gonna happen, right here, right now. All may set foot within this door to lay claim to its rewards. However, you must first overcome a trial. Should this fail to deter you, open the door and step inside. I'll see what you can do. A trial. Pah. Couldn't be as hard as the fishing minigame. Star Chamber. Hi. Overcome the trial before you. Then I shall grant you a memory fragment and my blessing. Those are golden poltergeists. Star Guardian, 19,000 HP, no weakness. Guardian of a star door heals those who attack it, but when its HP starts to get low... And Mischief, 14,000 HP, uh, resisting against all elements except for time, space, and uh, mirage. Evil spirit that causes nothing but trouble and petrifies, hard to hit, and can split itself. That sounds like a... oh good lord. That sounds like I want to get some ass break reaction. I don't have range on this. I do not have good range on this. So, evil eye is not happening. Supreme flicker, can you hit two? Two is the most. Ah, that's good. Hard to hit, right. Uh, that is Reese. Arc Fencer is convenient as well. But hard to hit, can't forget. You have your craft almost red ready. Holy Blessing restores 50 CP. Not necessary right now. Your arts are... well, clock up is... Uh, not good right now. Walk there and attack them. Now she's in the middle of it. Petrification. How very nice. How high is the chance of that hitting? I don't want to know. Okay, Chloe. Okay. 
Let's hope Chloe gets, uh... Ow. That's a lot of damage. Yep. That was about what I w was expecting from that situation. Two get speed down. Death Scream. I want to see that damage. What's that gonna do? That's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage. I'm actually gonna do... I, I know I wanted to do Lichtkreis. Oh, I have Lichtkreis as my ass breaker. I said that. Cool. Cool. That should definitely revive Reese, but not with much. Not with much is the thing. Heartbreak will do. Wow, that's a lot. That's like nearly no damage, though. Okay, I think we're done. I think we're dead. We need. We can't do this one without petrification resistance. So I just uh, went ahead and got myself into a bad spot. Could have healed Reese, but it doesn't matter. These guys have like a hundred percent on petrify, so I suck. What? I'm sorry. That's what she said. We need petrification resistance if we want to do this one. Moonlight healing. And he does not revive us, so there's that. I'd very much like to blind all these little uh, mischief guys. That would be very convenient. If I used arts, it would happen right now. How much do they have remaining? That's a lot, so that's death. Running is not an option. Could use that again, so well it doesn't matter. It has a KO chance, but it's probably not gonna hit. Or they're resistant against it, who knows? I'm probably resistant against it. Or that guy just got hit in the back there. Bloop. <clears throat> With petrification resistance, this should be pretty easy. Game over, yes, we're gonna reload a save. Title screen. All right, fair. You get to look at the title screen again. We left off in Saint Croft Forest. Well, we have one Mirage Ring. I'm definitely going to put that on Chloe, but that lowers her damage output, huh? You're the most tanky. The Lamp Choker is not going to be necessary. Mirage Ring, prevents Petrification, what else do we have? Hmm, is one gonna be enough? Definitely not. What might be enough though is going back to Hermit's Garden, refilling all our CP, that was kind of unfortunate. And then... And then setting Chloe's Assbreaker to being offensive instead of completely defensive, and then the first thing being um, having <clears throat> high damage output. Do we have, we only have single target ass breakers on us still, don't we? Single, single, single. Okay. Let's try that again. I want revenge. Revenge is mine. Could taunt with a still, honestly. Who has the higher defense? You have 1,200, you have 1,000. So that's happening. Mirage ring on a still. I have one more Crimson Eye in there. No, we have nothing that uh, is worth equipping, so let's equip the speed up. And still, you're going to equip instead of that. 
No, you want to hit with a false emblem is not necessary. So you take the Mirage Ring. We change our tactics so that it still is up front and everyone else is in the back. And then we run straight into the middle of them uh, with a stell. And then we buff her defense, hopefully. Or she is gonna drink a fragrant juice in there, who knows. We'll see. We'll see, but I do want to get this done. I'm gonna open that door. I can do this, I know that. Problem is we only have one Mirage Ring. Overcome the trial before you. I will. That's not gonna hit everybody. We're gonna have to wait for them to bundle, bundle up together. So you're gonna move a little farther back. You can use Death Scream. True Heartbreak? Some, somewhere way back here, no. Yeah, taunt them. Is that gonna move you? You're gonna move forward, right? No. Pay attention or I will hit you. That's a... Uh, okay. We're gonna move into the back as well. And then we're gonna start with the ass breakers. Joshua's gonna come first. We have to wait a little with Reese so that uh, I get the maximum use out of that one. There were two death blows. That is convenient. He literally just used 200 CP and got 80 back. He got 80 back. Murr. Taunted. Nice. I think those were two death blows as well. Okay, we're getting there. We just got lucky this time, honestly. Okay. Your heavenly strike would hit everyone. Upon the golden wings of battle. I want to look at another half-naked Valkyrie. Honestly, if that's what she does when you want to catch a glimpse of what she has under her skirt, well, I probably wouldn't try. Okay, Estelle, you have 180, you have line, you have area medium, but... Oh, set. I can do one like these. Is that gonna hit? I'll throw it. Yeah. Petrify me all you want, you're not gonna be able to do it. But dude, it still hurts. Shooting star! Ow. Not like it hurts, but, uh, ow. That's gonna take care of the little guys. You're gonna do a dual strike against this joker. And done.
Wait. Hey, buddy. How are you still alive? Why does that do zero damage? Another shooting star. Oh, no. Done. Yeah, that was easy. If you have a strategy to follow, which is basically all our damage and hope for death blows, that was apparently the strategy today. We got a level up, we got nice gains, and we got EP charge 2 tier all bomb. Nice. You have overcome the trial. Thus, I shall grant you a memory fragment and my blessing. Orbments are devices that use the orbital energy contained within Zeptium to cause a variety of useful effects. It has only been a little over half a century since they were first invented, but even in such a short time they have already revolutionized the world as we know it. From daily necessities such as lighting and heating, to tanks and other similar weapons used to defend our nation, orbments are used in just about every facet of our lives. In fact, it's now hard to imagine life without them, as so much of what we ha what we take for granted in life now involves them in some way. And it is to prof proliferate and advance the development of these orbits that we exist. We, the Epstein Foundation. Our foundation was first established in the year 1155 of the Zeptian calendar, the year after Professor Epstein's passing and was created by the, his brilliant-minded disciples in order to, uh, to honor his wishes. The foundation is based in his home state of Lemon, where the, it remains in operation to this day. It was rather limited in size in the beginning, and its attempts to spread orbital technology was initially met with little success. Sensing that the professor's dream would never be realized at, at the rate they were going, three key researchers left Lemon to try and spread the seeds of orbital technology across the continent themselves. One of these was Professor G. Schmidt. The professor, who had gained a fine reputation of his own skill in the field of mechanical engineering, went around and visited corporations in various nations to persuade them of the benefits of orbits. The f second was Professor L. Hamilton. Mindful of the technological gap between regions, he, longed <clears throat> he long believed it was rural and remote areas that needed orbit technology more than any other. As such, he enlisted to the help of the Bracer Guild, which already had a close relationship with the Foundation, and formed a mission with the in intent of promoting and spreading the technology where apl applicable. The professor himself also toured the regions with the aim of spreading public awareness and laying foundations for others to build on in the future. The third was Professor A. Russell, known as, uh, known, uh, now known far and wide as the father of orbital revolution. Professor Russell returned to his home nation of Liberal and continued to work tirelessly to advance orbit technology there. And within a year of returning, he had set up the Size Engineering Factory, now known as ZCF, and created the first orbit um, to be made outside Lemon State. Three years later, the reigniting King of Liberal had the time. At the time, Edgar III visited the factory to inspect it, and he decided to donate a large amount of money to further its research. With His Majesty's endorsement, orbits began to spread like wildfire throughout the kingdom, bringing so much prosperity that the people of other nations were filled with envy. Up until then, most people didn't see orbits in a particularly positive light, but their success in Liberal changed those impressions virtually overnight. One nation after another began to reach out to our foundation to share orbment technology and both our foundation's financial and social standing became that much more secure. In the eyes of the world, the orbital revolution was a sudden, far-reaching transformation. But it was only because of the years of research out to people and diligent, largely unnoticed research that it was able to happen at all. I can't read that. No. No, there's no reading that. The Foundation's activities center around the following three guiding principles. One, carrying out fundamental research on orbits. 
to spreading oral technology and informing the public of its beliefs, uh, benefits, contributing to world peace throughout uh, through technology. Now then, let's discuss each of these three guiding principles in more depth. 1. Carrying out fundamental research in orbits. The Foundation's most important mission is, naturally, the improvement and or development of orbital technology. The fundamental principles behind how orbits work need no improvement as such, but their architectures, their initial structures, have been improved upon countless times in the past and will surely continue to be perfected by the curious mind as the years goes, go on. Orbin's architecture concerns the mechanical parts inside them, such as the cogs and screws. There is still plenty of room for changes as this new technology develops. These improvements can reap great rewards, but the research necessary to make them is known to be as lengthy as it is expensive. As a result, companies who prioritize profit over all these, uh, over all else, are less inclined to pursue them. That makes our foundation's research all the more important from a social perspective. 2. Spreading orbital technology and informing the public of its benefits. Two other important goals of the foundation are to spread orbital technology as widely as possible and to ed ed educate the public on the correct way to use it. While orbits have become part of the daily lives of most who live in advanced nations and populated urban areas, the reality in remote and mountainous regions is very different. To counter this, we have long worked to send missions of engineers and bracers to these regions to try and better the standard of living for these people, and will continue to do so. We also continue to work on other ways to spread awareness of orbital technology, such as working closely with the Zeptian Church to have it added to the curriculum of Sunday school classes. 3. Contributing to world peace through technology. It is to pursue this noble yet extremely difficult goal that the Foundation has yet uh, has had a close relationship with the Bracer Guild ever since its initial founding. The Guild was established as an international peacekeeping organization and can mediate all conflicts between nations from a neutral point of view, making it essential to the stability of our world as it stands. The Epstein Foundation continues to back them up fully in their cause, both with financial aid and using the fact that Lemon State is the only place where tactical ordnance are produced to provide them with equipment. Just as well, this relationship also provides ideal feedback toward tweaking the qu quality of tactical ordnance as they are used in combat too. Every machine and every invention goes through a long grueling process behind the scenes before eventually reaching its finished refined form and tactical orbits are no exception. Then in the in the year 1190 our foundation unveiled the Orbital Network project which will be implemented in partnership with ZC with ZCF. Said project uh, aims to join all of Zimuria together with a single united communications network, but our hope is that it will do much more than that. Our hope is that it will help to realize a peaceful world through communication. Sadly, Orbitz's relationship with peace as a concept has become somewhat complicated. Are they aiding in this re realization or are they doing the exact opposite? Professor, Professor Epstein expressed his hopes that their ability to realize the limitless looping of energy would be able to bring lasting peace to the world. Instead, recent years have thoroughly betrayed those hopes, and the post-revolution world has been a chaotic one it's indeed. The conflict between Liberal and Erebonia for one made significant use of orbital weaponry, airships included. It seems beyond a doubt that orbital weaponry will continue to become more and more advanced, making war e an even more tragic event than ever. In the fact of, though, of all of this, how should we go about trying to create a peaceful world? We believe the best way to do this is to rely on the power of communication and a means to do so with people on different na nationalities and races. If these people can more easily interact and more easily deepen their understanding of one another, perhaps that'll allow us to create the world we... I'm, I'm sorry. To, to create the world we all so dearly desire. In the end, one thing is for certain. Our, cha our challenges to try and realize Professor Epstein's ideals are only just beginning. Side story, the Epstein Foundation finished. Ingenuity 2? 7000 Mira. Ingenuity 2 though. Huh. Ingenuity 2, you say? Hi. 
4 water, 8 fire, 4 time. Recovers a small amount of EP while walking in ba and in battle. Sir, you don't need scent, do you? Cast for ingenuity 2. Scent for cast 2. What do you got? Ah, uh, you don't have... Not good. Now that's not a good idea. That is not a good idea. Scent is better for you to have AoE heals. What would be even better would be Zeptium Vein. Just for the high amount of... Uh, if you took Ingenuity in a different slot, which is right here. Or is it? Where's my Ingenuity Quartz? It's on... on uh, Did I put it on Chloe? Yeah, it's still right there. If I gave you Zeptium Vein... No, you need wind, don't you? You need wind to do this, yeah. So what you really want... Why don't I have a good wind quartz, really? Why don't I have a really good wind one? Shield for Latiara all is so awesome. Large area of effect, 12,000 HP for allies. I want this, okay? I want it, but but uh, Shield Forge isn't gonna cut the mustard here, friend. So we're gonna switch that for that, and it still goes with the. Uh, if you, I gave you Ingenuity too, it wouldn't improve you that much. What does Joshua have? Where does the Ingenuity Quartz fit? Not the slot. Oh man, this is hard. This is rough. If I switched these, I would still have access to clock up X. She would be better off with buff skills. Ingenuity is something very offensively potent. If I took your scent away, you would lose the ability to heal well. And you wouldn't get again that much offensive power. I can't take that away from you. What I can take away from you would be cast or action. But if I took any of these, I would regret it. Ingenuity is like... Well, it's got its problems right now. It's not great. Not great for me in this situation. Although it is genuinely, or it's generally pretty great. So what did I take away here? I took away Zeptium Vein, didn't I? That's still looking okay. You've got a heal, you've got some skills. Do you really need EP cut? If I took that away and put a Zeptium Vein here, that would give you pretty good healing skills. You still have the Clog Up X, you still you don't have Luck Rest, but you don't have a Hellgate, but you do have, like, Stone Impact, which is still medium area of effect if you really want to. Oh, it's not great. It's not... Do I really want this one in the middle of... The, if we build it like this? Oh, I'd want Ingenuity in the middle. That should be much more useful. Right? No, that takes away my... Gives you Cyclone Napalm. Takes away your AoE uh, Earth skill. It's harsh. It's harsh. She still has Clog Up X. Oh, 
where does Ingenuity fit into this? Ingenuity doesn't. I'm unhappy. I need more slots, man. I need more slots. It's the same with Chloe. I need a slot for the range, and I need a slot for the Ingenuity, a perfect line. But, uh... It's just not happening. You want an Ingenuity Quartz? Why do you have a hit three? Uh, that slot is level... That slot is level three. Ah, it's a, it's a, right, that's a Mirage slot. So you can only equip Mirage here. I have something better than hit three. Action three is the best I can do there. HP four, right. We did this door, let's teleport to the thing we talked to here, Luminous mid Midpoint. <clears throat> let's upgrade a slot on Reese. Reese is gonna have to carry that thing. What? Well, that was the wrong thing to select. Man, getting the maximum use out of a slot like that, that's hard. Or a quartz like that is hard. Orbment Reese, this one. Action attack four for Ingenuity two. And HP four is the only blue you have. No, it's not for attack four. So you still have Curia, well. All those skills are, you have clock up X, so that's as good as it's gonna need to be. But you're not a caster. I don't play you as a caster. Alright, that's gonna have to do it for the moment. Good lord. Good lord. And um, we're gonna go back to the Hermit's Garden. Because as far as I know, we've done all the doors. That we have access to right now. And then in the next episode, we'll release whoever's in the Ceiling Stone. I'm kinda... I'm kind of curious as to who is going to be in there. Uh, before I forget it, I'm also going to adjust the tactics here, otherwise I'm going to be real mad next time. Is this what I want? I think it's not. I want Joshua up front and you two to the sides. Nice. Okay. Okay, I'm happy with that. So, for the moment, I, ho I, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I'll see you guys in the next episode as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I'll see you guys next time. Until then, bye-bye.